Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third video, doing the ECF doing a 30 day look at for today's third video. So it's also Tuesday, we've got the extended uh, European outlook for you. So uh, we'll have a look at that in a second. It's a 30 day forecast, but actually we go out to weeks five and six as well uh, with this. Um, but technically it's like a, like a month head forecast. But uh, I'll get on with it for you in a second, just say that the first video released today was our 7 a.m. Uh, forecast. We also uh, released our ANSO update for May 2021 as well. So have a look at that if you would uh, like to do so. Bring you update with all things La Nina and El Nino uh, related. And we're going to have a 10 to 14 day for you later on uh, this afternoon as well. So busy day at Gaz, let me say. Keep checking back to all of the updates. Thank you so much to ECMWF.INT for supplying us all with these charts. And with that... I think we'll get on with it. So we're going to begin by having a look at the uh, week one mean sea level pressure anomaly. This is going to take us from the 24th to the 31st of May. The coming week, we'll have high pressure blocking uh, to our north. So we've got quite a bit of high pressure up to the north. We've also got high pressure from the Azores, ridging into western and central and indeed some eastern parts of Europe. I mean, low pressure is out towards uh, Greenland and in the North Atlantic. So it's a complicated old uh, pattern in the coming week, but the upshot is we're going to see an increase in influence from high pressure, both from uh, the south and also from the north. We're going to find high pressure building across many parts of Europe in the weekend. So it should be a lot of dry weather uh, or drier weather coming along in, uh, in the coming week. 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that. Again, we've still got the northern blocking here between Greenland and Scandinavia. Low pressure to the south of Greenland in the North Atlantic. There's a trough of low pressure sitting over central parts of Europe and a ridge down into the Mediterranean as well, extending in from the Azores High. But the situation is still the same. High pressure ridging up from the southwest and also ridging in from the northeast should bring increasing amounts of anti-cyclonic influences, influences to many parts of uh, Europe in the week ahead. Temperature anomalies will be cool, though, for many parts of Europe uh, this week. So down into the Mediterranean, we've got Spain looking warmer than average. Also got Greece and into parts of Turkey looking pretty hot. In between, though, it's quite cool through this central bowl uh, of the Med. And Italy, a little bit warmer than average uh, through there. But like the holiday islands, of, like Corsica, Sardinia, uh, Mallorca, Minorca, Ibiza, all of those sort of areas, Malta, in the central Med, uh, cooler than average, uh, below average temperatures there. Going further northwards, a little bit warmer than average across parts of Scandinavia, especially Norway, and into central parts of Sweden. These are the exceptions to the rule, though. Generally, it's a cool to cold uh, scene uh, for the time of year, anyway, with below average temperatures. So right away from Ireland, UK and France, in west, all the way over to the Russian border and the Black Sea. In the east, it, we have below average temperatures. The core of the below average temperatures through really the central part of the uh, med, where on the temperature scale, we go down to uh, the central part of Europe, I should say, where on the temperature scale, we're going down to between three and six degrees below average. So, a very cool week to come. Um, precipitation wise, look like that. So, varying from area to area. The far north of Europe looks a little bit drier than average this week across many parts of Scandinavia, but southern Scandinavia into the Baltic Sea. Um, those sort of areas are wetter than, than normal. Ireland and the UK, near normal precipitation, gradually starting to dry out a little bit, I think, there. And then down into west of Europe, we've got Spain, uh, Portugal and France, looking rather dry and average southeastern part of the Med. Uh, also rather dry and average from Italy over the age, adding to the Balkans, and then down into Greece and Turkey drive an average uh, through there. But then we have a swathe of wetter weather, like through the central bowl of the men, just into the far southeast of Spain, a little bit unusually. Uh, and then, of course, we've got these areas in the east of Europe, but, but also look rather wetter too. So we do have a lot of variation with precipitation, but the overall trend, I think, is towards drier, more anti-cyclonic weather in the week ahead. Week two will take us from the 31st of May to the 7th of June. So again, we have this ridge from the Atlantic into Western and then on into Central and indeed many Southern parts of Europe. A lot of high pressure there. Low pressures around Iceland, probably bringing more and settled conditions in towards Scandinavia and, uh, and possibly affected parts of Northern Britain uh, as well. The 500 millibar height anomaly for uh, week two is looking like this. 
So uh, again, we've got this area of low pressure, below average heights around Iceland, between Iceland and Scotland, really. The northern blocking is pushing further back into the Arctic. This is a trough of low pressure, but we've got this week across Central Europe. That's progressing into the northeast of Europe. So be a bit cool and unsettled there. And then we've got high pressure regime from the Atlantic into Spain and then down into uh, the Mediterranean. Week two temperature anomalies still look pretty cool across many parts of Europe. It is a struggle to raise these temperatures up. So again, we've got Spain and Portugal down into North Africa, hotter than average. We've got Greece into Turkey on the east side of Med, hotter than average. The central bowl of the Med still looking pretty cool. And then anywhere further northwards, away from Scandinavia, where it's a bit warmer, anywhere further northwards has below average temperature. So again, we see Ireland and the UK below average all the way over to uh, western parts of Russia, below average through there, and down into towards the Black Sea. And again, three central parts of Europe. So again, like, like um, the low countries, like Germany, Poland, Ukraine, all of those areas are below average with the temperature. So it is a real struggle to get the temperatures to rise. Uh, week two precipitation anomaly uh, looking like this. Largely average to drier than average in most areas, but not completely dry. A little bit wetter average to the north of Scotland. And over here towards the Black Sea, it's a little bit wetter average. Other than those areas, though, most of the parts look like they're still influenced quite strongly by, um, by higher pressure, especially so through western uh, parts of Europe, southwestern Europe and into the Med, where we are on the dry of the normal side through there. Right, week three will take us from the 7th to the 14th of June. Uh, a little bit of a weakening signal, but we have some high pressure then through France in some parts of England, and then extending into Western, Central and Eastern Europe. So kind of like from France to the Black Sea, we have, uh, we have uh, high pressure influences. Low pressure around Greenland, Iceland, probably into towards Scandinavia too, and then just weaker pressure probably associated with increasing temperatures down into the Mediterranean. Week 3, 500 millibar height anomaly, uh, looking like this. So some higher pressure across North Africa and down into the, up into the central part of Med. Slight ridge towards our southwest. It is a very weak one, southwest of Ireland and the UK, I should say. But it is a weak ridge there. Low pressure towards Greenland, Iceland, and low pressure on the east side of Europe. Quite a complicated pattern. I think the most unsettled weather is like in the northern, northeastern part of Europe and the driest weather will be in the southern, southwestern part of Europe. Uh, temperature anomalies uh, looking like this. So uh, still very cool in the east and the northeast of Europe. So anywhere like Poland eastwards, back to Russia, looking uh, cool uh, through those areas, cool of an average. Average to slightly below through western parts of Europe. Obviously the temperature anomalies increase a little bit compared to weeks one and two for like Ireland, UK, France. Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, Germany. The temperature anomaly is, is increasing slightly because we've gone from slightly below average to uh, average or no signal, generally. But probably still a, a bit on the cool side. Anything notably warm is mostly down into the Med. Uh, so from Spain, like all the way over in towards uh, Greece, uh, all those areas might be warm and average in the third week. And the, uh, the precipitation anomaly for week 3, 7th to 14th of June, Looking like this. Overall, again, it's a weakening signal, but it does look rather dry on average through these western parts of Europe. Also looks very dry through these eastern, southeastern parts of Europe and into the eastern portion of the Med. And a little bit wetter, perhaps, up into the far northeast of Europe. That takes us through to uh, week four, then. So let's have a look at that. This is the 14th to 21st of June. Now, this is placed in an area of high pressure over Ireland and the UK here. So high pressure is moving a little bit further northwards and becoming centred over, uh, over Ireland and uh, UK and also extending towards like parts of northern Germany, Denmark. So this area could be influenced by high pressure. Looks like we've got some low pressure down towards Spain. That's probably heat low, uh, which is typical and won't produce much way of precipitation probably. Otherwise, uh, it's a weakening signal, so uh, not much of a signal to work on there through many other parts of Europe. Let's see what 500 millibar height anomaly has to say for week four. Again, it's just indicative of that high pressure ridging in over Ireland and the UK, sending a little bit further north as well. Low pressures over on the eastern side 
of uh, Europe. The uh, jet stream then will be doing something a little bit like that. So uh, many western parts of Europe should be on the warm side of the jet at this point. Under that area of high pressure should be turning drier and warmer for Western Europe anyway. The temperature is still a little bit of a struggle, but maybe hinting at becoming a bit warmer generally on this Western side of Europe. So from Scandinavia down to Spain, uh, we might be seeing a signal there, things to be quite warm. Most parts of the Med look uh, reasonably uh, warm as well. Into the east part of the Med looks rather warm there. And then of course there's this area of below average temperatures here across Eastern Europe again. So uh, once more from like Poland to the Black Sea, that's where we've got those cooler than average conditions. And uh, week for uh, precipitation anomaly looks generally dry on average across much of the west and north of northwest of Europe. So all of these sort of areas from Scandinavia through the UK to Ireland into France down to Spain and Portugal. On the dry on average side uh, through there, the far east and southeast of Europe is dry on average too. Um, and, and then this central to east and northeast part of Europe looks a little bit wetter. As ever, though, by trying to get through to week four, it is a weakening signal. Right, let's just extend you out through uh, weeks five and six data. Then, so this is week five, means there were pressure anomaly from the twenty first of June, from twenty first, twenty eighth of June. Um, the high pressure beginning to weaken uh, a little bit over UK and Ireland. So a little bit of high pressure left to our southwest. Again, this is probably a heat low down towards Spain. Some lower pressure over here, perhaps. Uh, otherwise, again, very very weak signals for week five. Be week five. 500 millibar height anomaly again not really uh, not really uh, anything useful doing there week five temperature anomaly uh, it's going to be looking like that yeah that's changed over so uh, much of southern Europe looks quite hot by this point it does look as though uh, the heat is going to reach up be bit start to bit be building across North Africa and into much of the Med through uh, through this June, as you'd expect, of course. Northern Europe probably hints at being a bit on the cool side, uh, if anything, I would say. Uh, but it is a weak signal. And then week five precipitation, uh, again, weakening signals. Looks rather drier here from the central part of the Med. Otherwise, again, not much uh, useful, uh, not much of a useful signal. And then week six, which is the 28th of June, to the 5th of July, looks like that. So, uh, just a very, very weak signal for some higher pressure just to the southwest of Ireland and the UK. Otherwise, again, it's all looking very, um, very white, which is not much of a, uh, much of a useful signal. Some higher pressure just there over to the southwest of the UK. So, again, could be a little bit of a drier, warmer start to July there, perhaps for UK and Ireland anyway. Temperature anomaly is still struggling, so it's warmer than average now into France and through these western and southwestern areas, a bit cooler than through these northern and eastern parts of Europe. And lastly, the precipitation anomaly for week six. Looks average to rather drive an average in most areas, and especially so again through these western parts of Europe. So to be honest, the western Europe, we may get some higher pressure as we go through this June. We'll have to wait and see about that. Uh, but uh, but maybe, maybe some higher pressure on the way. Right, so, but uh, of course, weeks five and six are always very uncertain. In more immediate time frame, uh, we've got stronger signals. So it looks as though uh, this coming week, like the, the, the rest of May, we'll see an increasing trend towards higher pressure across many parts of Europe. That will take us into early June. Um, should bring a lot of dry uh, weather as well. Always a little bit more uncertain across northern Europe, always dry some moist in, across southern Europe, very classic this time of the year. And then it all gets rather uncertain, I think, from mid-June onwards, so we wait and see. Right, so that's it for your EC30 day. Look, Kev, we'll be back later on with your memory. just a snapshot, what Mars is showing. So uh, anything beyond five, seven days comes with danger. It could look very different uh, next week. We will be back later on with your uh, 10 to 14 day. Uh, and that will include all the regular features as well. So come back for that then. But for this week's ECMWF 30 day forecast, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.